What's up guys? Today I bring you episode 90 of the coolest tech of the month, March 2024. And I really can't believe that we have gone through 90 episodes already. The first episode was published seven years ago. Let me know in the comments if you saw episode number one. So once again, we'll be checking out a whole bunch of hand-picked innovative Cortec gadgets, which include an impressive new e-bike by Fido. We have an incredible new camera by Insta360. We have Android tablets, gaming keyboards and mouse. We have a gaming router. We've got some cool PS5 accessories, a brand new streaming box by Superbox, a super budget smartphone, and lots, lots, lots more. So get comfortable. An epic episode is about to begin. I'm going to try and get through these as quick as I can. And as usual, everything will be linked in the description box with timestamps so you can jump straight to the product that interests you so without any further ado let's begin with the first cool product so first up we have the Fido eGravel C21 e-bike this e-bike has a number of great features which include torque sensor zero resistance silent motor hydraulic brakes massive 80 kilometer range and it takes only three hours to fully charge the e-bike and also it's pretty lightweight at 18 kgs Design-wise, the e-bike is made from aluminium alloy and has a very nice matte finish to it. The e-bike comes very well packaged in a large box and the first step is to snip all the cable ties. Let's go. Now this comes with quite a large accessory box. Inside you will find, first of all, your back and front fender support poles. You get two bags of screws and nuts and fixtures. You get a handy illustrated user manual and underneath this foam you have even more goodies. So you get a cycle bell, a front light, you get left and right pedals clearly marked LNR. You get a whole bunch of tools, spanners, wrenches and allen keys. The actual display control unit, a rear bike tail light, a power supply and here is a quick close up of the voltage info and you also get a European power cable with UK adapter included. All right, now let's get this assembled. Now this comes with everything you need to assemble the bike. I'm using my electric screwdriver because I'm just lazy, but all the tools are provided for you. Installing the display unit and the fenders was a little bit fiddly, but the instructions are clear and quite easy to follow. And the e-bike was fully assembled and ready to go within 35 minutes. Now on the left of the handlebar you have a control button to switch your front lights on or off. The second button is your pedal assist levels. There are five levels to choose from which are eco mode, normal, sports, turbo and you even have a turbo plus mode. The third button is a loud digital horn making that old school bell next to it redundant. And the fourth button brings up an alternative view showing you more metrics like time, average speed, top speed, distance, etc. Furthermore, this e-bike has a 250 watt brushless rear hub motor. There is a built-in torque sensor giving you up to 40 newton meters of torque. So harder you pedal, the more power you will get from the motor. Slower pedaling will give you less power. Now the top speed for this bike is supposed to be around 15 miles per hour. But by pedaling as hard and fast as I could, I was reaching speeds up to 21 miles per hour. Not complaining at all, really nice smooth drive and plenty of power, especially in turbo plus mode. The 28 inch wheels are nice and grippy and overall ride was very comfortable and powerful and the motor is not too loud in operation. And in the higher modes, hills are no sweat for this bike. You also have hydraulic disc brakes front and back and nine speed Shimano gears. The battery is fixed and hidden within the frame and it takes around three hours to fully charge, but the battery can be removed and replaced in the future should you need to. Now the e-bike is also quite lightweight. It's only 18 kgs. Now I believe Fido has this bike on sale right now. The e-gravel C21 by Fido is a pretty good e-bike for the money. The Insta360 Go 3 in midnight black, 64 gig version. So here is the camera itself. The main go through unit is super tiny in size. It weighs only 35 grams, which is a super tiny action camera capable of recording up to 2.7K resolution video at 30 frames per second. The Go3 has a magnetic back and it can attach itself to different surfaces. 
Now, this is one of my favorites. This is a magnetic pendant that you wear around your neck. You stick it on and it's a very strong magnetic connection. The Action Pod is basically an action camera body without the camera in the middle. So they've given us a modular design. So you simply drop the Go 3 into the Action Pod and it sticks in magnetically and it's also locked in place. If you want to release it, you need to press this padlock button and then pull the action camera out. Now on the side, you've got power button and a Q button. At the bottom, you've got those two sections on either side, which helps the camera connect to the quick release, which I'm about to show you. So this is the quick release mount. And I really, really like this. Check it out. So you basically drop the action camera down and that is secure. That is not going anywhere. So you simply connect it to any of these universal GoPro connections, and then you can stick it on a helmet, on a bike, on your chest and whatnot. So. Now in the main box, the pivot stand is included with the quick release on top. Show you this in action. Sticks on really nice and secure and the pivot stand can basically be tilted forwards, backwards, left and right. You've got an easy clip connection for the Go 3 to slip it in place. And then you can click this on to a number of surfaces, your clothes, your belt and so on and so forth. Now the Go 3 has an internal 310 milliamp hour battery and when you drop it into the action pod, it automatically starts charging. As the action pod has its own 1270 milliamp hour battery, giving you up to 170 minutes of video recording time. And if you use the Go 3 standalone, then you can expect around 45 minutes battery life. When you dock the Go 3 into the action pod, it takes around 35 minutes for a full charge. And the action pod itself needs around 65 minutes for a full charge. And you can see a type C connection on the side. So 2.7K is the maximum video recording resolution, but you can also record in 1440p and 1080p at 50 frames. Now this camera features the latest version of Insta360's flow state stabilization, and it can no doubt shoot super smooth looking video. So no matter what you're doing or what you're filming, expect super smooth stabilization. Furthermore, the camera does have a six axis gyro built in and you also have a 360 degree horizon lock. Now the Go 3 mini camera has built in internal storage. You've got three options, 32 gigs, 64 gigs or 128 gigs. Now there is no micro SD expansion at all. So whichever storage space that you select, that is what you're going to have to work with. Furthermore, this camera does have built in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and it's five gigahertz Wi-Fi. The Go 3 does feature stereo microphones. So you've got one microphone on the front and you've got one microphone on top. And the mics do feature wind reduction and directional focus. Also the action pod with the Go 3 installed and also installing the lens guard. This whole unit then becomes IPX8 water resistant up to five meters. And the action pod itself on its own is IPX4 splash and rainproof. Now the Go 3 also features the power of voice control version 2.0. So you can say things like start or stop recording to control the camera with your voice. Other cool features, you have time shift, slow motion, pure shot HDR and time lapse. Now if all that was not enough, the software actually features auto editing. So you can use AI to let the software edit your videos for you. Now I was also quite surprised to see that you can use this action camera as a webcam. So you just connect this via Type-C directly to your laptop or computer, and then you'll have the option to switch this to webcam mode. So you can use this for video conferencing. And you can also use the Action Pod as a remote viewfinder for this camera. Now going forward, I will certainly be making use of this Insta360 GO 3 camera in my future e-bike and e-scooter videos. So next up, we are checking out an ultra cool PS5 cooling stand. And here it is guys. So this is a cooling stand for your PlayStation 5 and it's not compatible with the new slim versions. So here's my PlayStation 5 digital version. This comes with a screw. There's a little circle. You can just remove it quite easily. There is a small thread in there and that is where the screw is going to go. Turn your PlayStation 5 upside down. Uh, place the stand on top in there. Okay, that's done. And then stick that screw in and tighten. It doesn't have to be too tight. Okay, and that's it. Now you can flip this thing back over. Now on the side of the console, you get an extra USB port and two Type-C ports to play with. On the back, you can see an exhaust fan and you've got an input. So that is where you're gonna plug in the power. So included Type-C to USB-A cable. Now on the front of the unit, you've got some touch buttons and you've even got some color changing LEDs. Now when you press this button over here, it will turn the fan on. So you can hear there is a fan spinning and it even tells you at the top the temperature of your console. It says 71 Fahrenheit. So if you press it again, 
the fan goes faster. There are two fan speeds, or you can switch it off. Now over here, you've got your lights. You can switch your lights off, or you can cycle through a couple of different modes. You've got your controller stands on the side. If I just grab one DualSense controller, and you can see the color has changed to red, which means it's charging. But when that color turns green, it means it's fully charged. If we keep the temperature button pressed for a few seconds, it will switch everything off. And that can hook on either side, and that's basically a hook for your gaming headset if you use one. So this is a digital console, but just to show you what it looks like, I've just stuck some PlayStation 4 games on the side. I've got eight games here, but this will store up to 12 games. So next up, we are looking at the GameSir T4N Lite Nova. Comes in this rather nice protective case. Open it up and you will see a controller which is very reminiscent of that Stadia controller. This is a multi-platform controller. It supports PC, Nintendo Switch, Android, and iOS. You have three-in-one connectivity. So this does support Bluetooth. You've got a 2.4 gigahertz wireless dongle hidden in the case, and this can also be used wired via Type-C cable. You've got dual joysticks, and these are Hall Effect joysticks, so no stick drift. You've got the D-pad, XYBA buttons, You've got a mode button in the middle, and then you've got a few extra buttons, select start, and you've got the game sell home button as well. Up on top, we've got analog triggers, which feel pretty good, and you've got your regular shoulder buttons. On the back, you have grippy texture. It does feel very familiar. If I close my eyes, it feels like a Stadia slash Xbox controller. Now, you've got dual vibration motors in the grips, turbo function, and you have a 600 milliamp hour built-in battery, so you can expect long gaming sessions. So I'm just gonna connect this to my Geekom mini PC, plug the USB in to the front, and just to show you, Windows detects this as an Xbox 360 controller, and you can see it's working fine. Let's just jump into a game. Yeah. Controller feels really good. So we're just going to do some PS3 emulation. Fight Night Champion. I really like this game, so let's just play it with this controller. This is a very interesting tech bag by a company called STM Goods. I've tested a few of their products and they do design unique stuff. So I've got both colors, the brown and the black. So closed up, this looks no bigger than a wash bag. Apparently this will open up on itself into a full size backpack. So what I'm a little bit worried about is how easy is it gonna to be to close it back up again. Um, let's see what happens. So. I'm just pulling it out like so. Wow. That's just a pocket. Oh, wow. I got no idea how I'm going to collapse that back into a small package. You've got a laptop airbag protection, fits up to 16 inch laptops, and it's a highly rugged. 210 nylon material. We've got a zip on the side and that's quite a deep pocket. On the back you've got some straps and you've got some padding as well. It feels like a very light but regular backpack. Now inside this is supposed to be inflatable. Ah there you go. We've got a section here. All right we're gonna blow into this. So that is puffed up. Like so, you can basically stick your laptop in there and you've got yourself some padding. This is my 13 inch MacBook Pro, stick that in. But the box says it fits up to 16 inch laptops. So I've got a 13 inch in there and yeah, there's enough space there. So you could fit a 16 inch in. It's padding, not just on the top, but the bottom and all, all of this area as well, completely padded. Wow, that's amazing. That is actually quite amazing. Um, got a pocket on the side for water bottles on both sides. So check out the inside.
you've got to make sure you take all of that air out and see second this is the moto g34 check this one out details make it real 120 hertz display and dolby atmos premium design within reach no doubt it's plastic frame all plastic body but it's a smooth matte finish on the back with the motorola logo you've got very nice unique camera bump which hardly protrudes out while that switch is on let's see what else you get inside the box so we've got some paperwork we've got a type c to usb a power cable and we've got a power supply and trying to get a closer look hello moto and this is a 20 watt power supply okay so the phone is powered on and you've got a fingerprint reader built into the power button on the side okay and you've got face unlock as well at the bottom headphone jack microphone type c port and a loudspeaker on the side we've got power button volume rocker up on top you've got another microphone and you can see there it says dolby atmos and there is a secondary speaker at the top and quick look at the sim card tray you can see we have a hybrid sim card tray it can take two 5g nano sims or one micro sd card up to one terabyte and one 5g sim now you're looking at a 6.5 inch IPS HD plus display screen resolution is 1600 by 720 you've got 269 pixels per inch and as I mentioned earlier this is a 120 Hertz display so it can automatically change the refresh rate and you do have the option to go 60 Hertz or 120 Hertz all the time and the phone is powered by the Snapdragon 695 with 4 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of internal storage this is running a rather clean version of Android 14 as with most budget phones the bezels are apparent and you do have a slightly bigger chin at the bottom as well on the front we have a 16 megapixel selfie camera and we've got two cameras on the back 50 megapixel primary and we've got a 2 megapixel macro this phone has a 5000 milliamp hour battery and supports 20 watt fast charging and the phone manages to be quite slim and light it's 8.19 millimeters in thickness and weighs 179 grams and here's a quick look at the camera menus you've got slow motion video photo portrait mode pro mode and then you've got more under which you have many other options you can choose. If you're wondering about the maximum video resolution, if I go to settings, you have the option between standard and high. And same for the front, you have the option for standard or high. Now for the price, there are quite a few features thrown into the mix. 120 Hertz refresh, headphone jack, micro SD expansion, big battery, Android 14, and then you've got the mid-range Snapdragon performance. Next up on our cool list, we have a brand new Android tablet. This is the Doogie. T3OS. Now this year I've noticed Android tablets are getting better and better. There was a there was a stage where I was refusing to review Android tablets only because it was the same old, same old. But check this out, guys. Metal body, really nice premium finish. Look at that camera bump design. Look how fancy that looks. <laughs> Budget Android tablets have become a lot more premium. Um, at the top, you can see volume rocker, power button. We've got dual speakers on this side with a SIM card tray. That's a dual 4G SIM card tray, or you can have one micro SD card up to one terabyte and one 4G SIM. There is a type C port in the middle, pogo pins for future expansions, and you've got two more speakers on this side. So you've got high resolution quad speakers. And inside, Type-C to USB-A charger and a power supply. And you can see it is in fact a 10 watt charger. So 11 inch IPS 2.4K resolution display supports TUV Rhineland certifications for low blue light. This tablet is powered by the Unisoc T606, which is a 12 nanometer octa-core clocked at 1.6 gigahertz. And for graphics, you have the integrated Mali G57. Now for RAM, we have six gigs of LPDDR4 RAM. And you can extend that up to 10 gigs of virtual RAM, giving you a total of 16 gigs of RAM. The internal storage is 256 gigs and you've got micro SD expansion up to one terabyte. You've got a massive 8,580 milliamp hour battery, which is amazing, but it supports only 10 watt charging. So that means it's going to take six months to fully charge that battery. It's going to take a very long time, not six months, but it's going to take a very long time to charge that battery. Um, I predict about two hours. It's going to take a solid two hours, but the battery will last a pretty long time. Furthermore, you've got five gigahertz Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5.0 and GPS. Now on the front, we've got an eight megapixel camera and on the back, we've got a single 13 megapixel main camera. That's a dummy and that's LED flash.
So next up we have a bunch of goodies from NZXT. The first one we actually already laid out. It's an extra large mouse pad with the NZXT logo in the bottom right hand corner. I'll briefly show you how big it is. The NZXT Lift 2 Ergo. So it's a lightweight ergonomic wired gaming mouse designed for right-handed use. It features 26,000 DPI sensor precision and you have optical switches. There are two buttons on the side and you've got your standard buttons, middle button and scroll wheel. So it feels really, really nice. No LED lights, anything like that. Just a minimal design gaming mouse with precision accuracy. This is the Function 2 Mini TKL optical gaming keyboard. Really nice keyboard. You've got lightning fast linear optical switches. You have traditional 10 keyless keyboard design with the smallest footprint possible. Compact space saving design. Feels really nice to type on this. 8000 hertz polling rate. So eight times faster than most gaming keyboards out there. You've got swappable switches. The top plate is made from metal. You've got volume control dial on the side. So you've got mute switch, a lock key, and the last button lets you cycle through all the LED colors and modes, or you can switch it right off. So next up, we're looking at a very futuristic looking gaming router by a company called Ray Yi. So check it out, guys. It looks like something from out of space. Now on the back, I'll show you the connections. You've got a reset hole, power socket, 2.5 gigabit LAN. Then you've got four regular one gigabit LANs. You got one dedicated for gaming and it says aggressive under port number three and four, which is interesting. Here's the bottom, you've got plenty of vents. So on top you've got LED and you've got a single button. This comes with an ethernet cable and a power supply. This is a Wi-Fi 6 router, powerful looking thing. Eight stream gaming router, powered by a two gigahertz quad core processor. Features Wi-Fi 6, 2.5 gigabit LAN, 160 megahertz bandwidth. You have eight high performance antennas built in. Supports WPA3, you've got one button mesh, you've got app control and VPN features. You can achieve up to 50% better network stability and achieving no lag in multiplayer games and you have a dedicated gaming ethernet port. All right. This is the Laxon Air Massage Vehicle Seat. It does 3D air massage for your back and thigh. Easy to use controller, dual heat settings, three drive massage mode. Two dynamic massage mode and compatible with all vehicles. All right, so this thing is available in two colors, brown or black. At the bottom, you've got the whole controller and, and a wire coming out of it. So in the box, you get a user manual. You've got your car power adapter and you've got a regular power supply. So you could use this thing at home, which is exactly what we're going to do. So there's a pocket over here where you can pull out a controller. So you've got five modes there, three drive modes and two dynamic modes, play and pause. You've got strength over there, timer, and then you've got low and high heat settings. Power is on, press play, and that's it. Massaging starting. So it's an air massage, so that actually pushed outwards. So various areas are gonna push out. Look at that. The whole seat is coming forward. So it's not a netting massage, it's, it's like a balloon. It's blowing up like a balloon. Let me sit down on this. I've never had an air massage before, so I don't know what to expect. Let's turn the heat setting on. Oh, that's weird. It's massaging my bottom now. It's massaging my backside. It's, and it feels weird. It's like two balloons pushing up against my lower back now. Now it's traveling up my spine. It's like a, like a strong air bubble pushing up my spine. This actually feels good. So when I read air massage, I thought that can't be, that can't be good. It is good. Okay, it's back on my bottom. Let's make this a bit more intense. There you go. Dynamic massage activated. Oh look, full body, just lower body and just back. So, so this is the back, only the back. Dynamic massage. That's literally so powerful, it's pushing me forward. My back is being pushed from the backrest. It's pushing me forward and then it's traveling up and down and various areas in my back. So next up we have the latest Superbox S5 Pro. LED display on the front, on the side micro SD slot, USB 3, USB 2. We've got a reset hole, then we've got power socket, infrared port, AV port, HDMI out, we've got a gigabit LAN, 
and an SPDIF port. And on this side, we've got nothing. And that brings us back to the front. And here's a quick look at the bottom. Inside the box, you've got an HDMI cable, power supply, the five watt power supply, user manual at the bottom. And you've got a full featured remote control powered by two AAA batteries, which are not included in the box a two-in-one Bluetooth and infrared remote. You've got a built-in microphone so you can initiate voice searches. Now the S5 Pro is a slight downgrade in build quality in order to give you guys a slightly cheaper price. So powered by the ARM Cortex A53 quad-core with Mali G3 One, you've got four gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of internal storage. This is running Android 12 and you've got a custom OS on top, giving you access to a world of live TV, pay-per-views, movies, TV shows, etc. Now you've got five gigahertz Wi-Fi, dual antennas, one gigabit ethernet port, Bluetooth 5.2, and you've got an overall plastic build quality with Superbox logo on the front. Check out the links in the description box for more information. So there you have it guys, that concludes episode 90. If you got this far, then please hit the like button and let me know which products were your favorites from the bunch. I'll see you guys again next month with another fresh episode showcasing some of the coolest tech that I set my eyes on. Like, sub and follow if you have not already. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.